many would say we are in the Renaissance era of music post COVID. What are the biggest differences that you've noticed in the last three to four years? Um, three years music been in three to four years. Uh, I'm just glad people are back outside. I think um, the public is uh, tired of sitting inside and probably more ready to be entertained. So. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more uh, shows popping up, independent shows and um, opportunities across the board. We just did a film score for a contest. Uh, shout out to Track Nasty EMT. And where would you like to see the music industry, say, five years from now? Uh, what man, do you think is going to make a difference? I, um, remember back when in the, we did what they considered a golden era on the uh, class of 96 so uh, the early 90s and uh music was booming man even the uh, late 80s like you know you had the uh, mtv bt and vh1 you had a lot of music uh oriented stations that actually catered to the music instead of uh all of the other details and propaganda so maybe the the 90s you know um i'm more than sure the uh it's not gonna be as lucrative the finances aren't the same with streaming and all that type of stuff. Uh, hopefully we can get the writers and the uh producers of media paid properly because uh, without that you know you have no imagination and obviously streaming isn't going anywhere so would you say the the weight of an artist talent is based on their live performance oh definitely connectivity uh read something from wendy day uh rap coalition the other day it made a lot of sense it says uh the older artists are more about the music and um don't understand the connectivity whereas uh, younger generation, and it's all technology. The younger generation is uh, totally about the uh, lifestyle of it all, but uh, they don't know how to connect through the music. So, you gotta find a medium somewhere right in the middle there. Okay, so then. Um. How would you say the hip hop industry has adapted around modern day oppression of people of color and minorities as well as the Black Lives Matter movement? <laughs> good, uh, that's a good question. Something I like to talk about. The politics of it all. Um, in that 90s era, hip hop had became uh, the precedent of our culture in America. Everybody was hip hop. You know, everybody was a hip hop baby. And it was lucrative, it had a lot of uh, power. So the powers that be, uh, they totally, I think, uh, redirected the money, redirected the power, used it, uh, used the political system to kind of uh, sell the music back, you know, kind of, I guess, I want to say restart it. I'm trying to be the optimist, but uh, the politics of it all, definitely hip hop as a culture, took hip hop, rap music, and uh, propagated to be something a whole lot less valuable than what uh, we can once remember. You used to have bands like NWA and then as recently as uh, Nipsey Hussle speaking out against social injustices and uh, the whitewashing of the music industry and the music. Um, and now you've kind of phased into the the slut rap of things and thought music. And um, fortunately, you know, empowerment and, and of, but also exploitation of women. Um, why do you think a lot of artists have diminished uh, their voice as far as uh, political subjects and turned more to hedonistic lyrical value um shock value uh 
uh, microwave society. Um, again, the words you kind of ask, you answer the question. Uh, exploitation, those who are unknowing or willing to be exploited. Um, they don't really uh, associate with where the uh, hip hop or our music, uh, again, that was so powerful. Um, they don't really uh, identify or associate with that. It was the voice of the people. Hip hop came from uh, organic experiences. And uh, a lot of people are just like uh, emulating with uh, what they believe is uh, hip hop. So it's kind of um, in a wash right now. You know, I think it's separating. I think, again, that three, four years uh, question we talked about is uh, a thing. I think people are starting to try to find that balance in that medium. But, uh, uh, politics again. Uh, I, I'm not, look. I'm not into anything. You know, I live and let live. But uh, my demographic, you know, we've been put up against some sort of obstacle. What is your demographic? Um, a young hip hop songwriter, perhaps. Uh, and I don't. I don't. You know, I just set myself aside because I'm speaking from my own individual. Um, when people associate you with rap or being a rapper or a hip hop uh, artist, they totally go to the same narrow minded point of view, the, uh, sex, drugs, hip hop, you know, um, things that are very, um, physical, you know, but I like to think of myself as on a celestial being, a spiritual level, and uh, we try to use our music to uh, educate and entertain. It ain't boring. It's not weird or anything. It's uh, pretty concise. It's pretty clear, but um, we do, do try to lean on the positive side of things and try to be a builder with it and speak from the heart of the people, you know. Pushing the evolution of conscious rap. Oh, definitely uh, mind over matter, you know, knowing what you're up against, uh, you know, trying to create a platform or, or something that's going to last, it has to be meaningful, something that uh, you can uh, empower the next generation with, you know, we use the word edutainment, you know, educate and entertain, and uh, you make entertainment. And... Um, politics don't only reach the music industry, but as a Saints fan, it's reached into other entertainment industries as well. Um, to elaborate on that. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Saints fan. Everybody know that. New Orleans Saints, man. Crazy about them Saints. Um, I know it's entertainment and media and everything, uh, but they use it as the Roman gladiators and the staging of uh, these great great athletes and uh, you know you can even see it inside of those situations as to where uh, you use the politics and we recently had the Colin Kaepernick thing I mean recently it's been a while now but uh, you know you remember certain boundaries and certain class levels and uh, things that we tend to excel at, they kind of box them in a little bit, is what I feel. That's what I truly feel in my heart. Even uh, locally on the Saints and stuff like that, you get some, some of those cases down here in the Gulf South. All the questions I had. What other topics do you want to discuss? Well, let's be now. I'm your man, St. Reggie. Kelly uh, from the Gulf Coast. Most people uh, immediately say New Orleans. Yeah, I'm born and raised in New Orleans, but I'm from the entire Gulf Coast, uh, all the way down as far as Mobile, Alabama, all the way back into New Orleans. 
Mr. New Orleans. Well, yeah, that's a thing. That's a new thing you're saying, Mr. New Orleans. But it's always been the Gulf Coast representer. You know, uh, half my family over on the Mississippi side and half on the uh, New Orleans side, the Louisiana side. So. Gulf Coast. Shout out to uh, all my brothers down in Biloxi. DJ Sergeant Rock, uh, T Skills, Shawty Brown. Some of the great producers I work with down in, uh, down in the music business, down at the, the bottom of the map. Hold on, I'm formulating the question. As a self-proclaimed lifestyler, um, obviously sex sells. Uh, you mentioned sex, drugs, and hip hop. Um, how do you plan on incorporating a version of conscious rap that is not only empowering um, to individuals in and out of the lifestyle and balancing between selling sex and selling your... Uh, your non-sexual creativity. It's a tough line of bridge for consumers because obviously people like what they like. Um, had a conversation with a drummer last night. Say we cater into what it is that they like as musicians, and uh, that's factual. Um, but I'm just about being my authentic self. I um, love beautiful women. I'm sure most men do. You know, beautiful things, beautiful people, and um, you can always accentuate accentuate that of a god or a goddess. You can always accentuate that, and it may it make sense to people. You know, in a classy way, it ain't gotta per se be the uh, slut rap we talk about, but uh, in a classy way, you know, elegance. So, would you say the the lifestyle has been somewhat of a muse to you in your music? Oh man, that's uh, she's the lifestyle is 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 the entertainment industry. It is the source of media. It is the nightlife. You know, um, music again, sex, drugs, and hip hop. It used to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but um, you know, all of those things cross paths in the nightlife in the nighttime. Shout out to Dean, the freaks come out at night. My favorite group, by the way, of all time. Oh, dude. Fine things, man eater. Like Hall and Oates, too. You gotta watch out for the man eaters. You definitely want to, young men, take your time. Don't try this at home. <laughs> what values would you like to? say it's a top four values what you would like to portray through your lyrics um, what are the things that matter most to you that you uh, sing about my number one word or driving force a purpose is liberation of all people um i would only hope that everyone would be able to live adjacent to just existing or surviving like everything in liberation you know um Young people, I like them to see that you, you, there is still, you can live your dream, you can be your dream, you know, you can, um, anything you want, the world is yours, literally is, and um, that is, that liberation, that escapism means that you don't have to be binded to just that, you can be more than one thing, to be a work in progress, um, it's not always, it's not always, it's not always working, you know. I'm um, I've been writing music for a long time. And, um, we went through COVID and we went through a lot of down periods with the music business. Anyone knows the music business know it's been a pretty tough place to be in for the past decade. But um, you don't have to be. Um, you're not sitting here to work a nine to five. If you choose to work a nine to five, that's fine. But you don't have to be that only. 
wherever it is that you want to be, you can uh, you can find it. You can seek, seek it out. You can find it. Some liberation, persistence, freedom. Those, yeah, good words. Uh, I, um, coach kids, you know, I, um, I've seen them grow. Seen them, you know, unable to do what it is they want to do and be frustrated by it. And uh, a little working, working out and figuring it out, I've seen them progress. I know how this thing works. I was once a child. So, growth, liberation, and elevation. Daddy rap. <laughs> Call it daddy rap. Shout out to Birdo Pro Motivation. One of the biggest promoters in the New Orleans area. My man Bird. I see you, boy.